Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. And today we're going to be taking a look at a 2020 uh, proportional system based off our current election results. So with a number of states certifying their results and not many outstanding votes with the exception of New York, I've decided to go ahead and take a look at the 2020 election results and apply it to a proportional map. Uh, we're probably going to be working with a couple of different election systems just to see what would actually happen in that case. Um, I think it's always an interesting scenario to apply a different type of uh, electoral process to the one uh, compared to the one that we're normally used to, used to. So if you're not entirely sure about how a proportional system would work, uh, generally each state would have um, the ability to vote for both candidates in the Electoral College. And uh, that means states such as Texas and California could award electoral votes for California's sake to Donald Trump and then for Texas' sake for Joe Biden, uh, despite one candidate overwhelmingly winning the state by a certain amount. Now, there's been discussion as to whether or not proportional means that it would go by congressional district or whether it would actually just go by uh, pure percent vote share. I'm going to go with the latter just because uh, gerrymandering would be a whole other issue and I don't really want to tackle, you know, which candidate won each state by which congressional district. I think going by percent would be um, one of the best ways to do it. And I think that would be a fairer way to look at a proportional system. So I'm using the results from the Associated Press and uh, we're going to go through um, each state alphabetically. But if you want a general idea of what the results would actually look like, let's take the first state, Alabama, for example. So Essentially, looking at Alabama, there is currently nine delegates. Essentially, this means the number of electoral votes. Donald Trump received roughly 62% of the vote in that state. I'll round up to 66% because that is the next closest percent margin. Joe Biden received 37% of the vote, so he receives 33% just because it doesn't have the exact amount. Um, however, that puts Joe Biden at three electoral votes, Donald Trump at six, despite Donald Trump winning the state. So it takes away the winner-take-all system. This benefits uh, both parties pretty much equally in some of these states, but uh, by the end of the video, you will see which party uh, comes out slightly better than the other uh, as we go through a proportional system. So we've characterized Alabama. Let's move on to the state of Alaska. And unfortunately for Joe Biden, he's not going to be able to get the exact percent that he actually received. He received 10% more of the vote um, than what he currently has in terms of uh, electoral vote count, but that's just how the proportional system is. It's never going to be an exact amount. Uh, Joe Biden's going to receive uh, six delegates or six electoral votes. I'm going to have to keep reminding myself that it's electoral votes and not delegates. The last time I worked with a proportional system was actually in the Democratic primary, so forgive me if I make a few mistakes in uh, saying it, but Joe Biden receives six electoral votes. Donald Trump receives five, so you can see that it's actually benefiting both parties at a certain point. Um, in Arkansas, Donald Trump receives four electoral votes. Joe Biden receives two just based off the vote share there. Uh, Joe Biden received roughly 34, 35% of the vote. So it makes sense he's receiving 33% of the delegates. I'm not going to focus too much on uh, non-swing states. We'll focus on the swing states purely just because um, they are interesting. But I'll, I'll make sure to mention some of these safer states because both parties are going to be getting uh, some of these larger states because both parties are going to be getting a pretty significant portion Um of the amount of electoral votes here. So we have a little bit more, and Joe Biden received 63.64% of the vote in California. Donald Trump received roughly 34%. Uh, he still gets electoral votes from California. So as you can see, not all 55 add on to Joe Biden, but it also uh, benefits Donald Trump as well. So that's the plus and minuses on both sides uh, for this system. In uh, Colorado, Joe Biden should receive five electoral votes. Donald Trump receives four Going over to the state of Connecticut, actually, if we did it by a uh, congressional vote here, Joe Biden would receive all of it, uh, but he's only receiving roughly 60%. So uh, Donald Trump receives uh, three electoral votes from the state. Let's keep going. The state of Delaware, this is actually Joe Biden's home state. Uh, Biden receives two. Trump receives one. Small state, so there won't be much leeway for both parties. D.C., Joe Biden actually receives it all. I'm not going to give anything to Donald Trump, considering he was only in single digits in this region. Now, Florida, which is one of the only swing states that actually voted for Donald Trump, uh, he receives roughly 51.2% uh, in the vote share, but 51.72% in terms of the uh, electoral count. So actually, uh, it's closer than what we uh, would have expected, given the um, vote share before. But that's just how it goes. Georgia is going to be a tie, just because because of how uh, exceptionally close it is, and it's not an odd, odd state. Uh, actually, 
I'm not going to do uh, a tie just because Joe Biden did win this state. And also, I don't want to leave it up. Um, but at the end, if you think that's unfair, you can always subtract one electoral vote from Joe Biden and add one to Donald Trump. But I think for the sake of characterizing every state in the map and not leaving any gaps for anyone who may skip to the end or just not understand why I would consider it a tie because Joe Biden is the projected winner of the state. I'm just going to keep it uh, with one way. And if Donald Trump narrowly wins another state, I will leave that uh, in his favor as well. I'm not trying to make this. Uh, intentionally biased this is not uh you know that one electoral vote won't be changing much in hawaii joe biden receives 67 percent of the vote there um, i'm going to give him three out of the four electoral votes uh donald trump actually improved based off hillary clinton's numbers in that state um idaho donald trump received 63 percent of the vote he's going to receive 75 percent of their electoral votes uh the state of illinois is next which actually has 20 electoral votes pretty large but uh, Joe Biden won't be receiving all of the uh, electoral votes from there. So uh, about even, to be completely honest with you, uh, in terms of net gain out of the state of in, uh, Illinois. Then we have Indiana. Donald Trump receives 57% of the vote share. I'm going to round up to 63% of the uh, electoral count because Joe Biden only received 4% uh, more than what he has based off of the uh, delegate share, or sorry, the electoral vote share. Iowa, um, Donald Trump receives, um, let's see, four electoral votes. Joe Biden receives two. Uh, <clears throat> going over to the state of Kansas, the state wasn't super close, but it was a 16 point margin of victory for Donald Trump. He receives five, uh, sorry, four out of the six electoral votes two for Joe Biden. Uh, we're getting through practically the red wall sometime soon. Kentucky, uh, eight electoral votes in total. Donald Trump should receive roughly 62%. Uh, Joe Biden receives the rest. So that's actually pretty surprising that they have an exact number there, but, um, it's a state with eight electoral votes and same thing in Louisiana. Uh, this date goes to Donald Trump, but only by a net two electoral vote. So let's take a pause real quick. Just take a look at the results we currently have. Well, as you can see, um, the states have been filled in, but it's about even uh, despite California being called and Arizona being called and Georgia and Florida being called. All of these states put both candidates about even. However, you do have to think, you know, because California and Illinois and Georgia and Colorado and Arizona have been called already. If those was a winner take all system, would we looking would we be looking at a different result? It would actually be a not super different. But let's wait till the end of the video to make our final comparison. In the state of Maine, it would actually just be the exact same as normal. We're not going to spend time um, focusing too heavily on that because they already have somewhat of a proportional system. Um, overall, it would just be, in fact, you know, because there's four electoral votes, I would have the same exact result. Nothing would change uh, about that. In Maryland, my home state, uh, Joe Biden received 66% of the vote here, actually the largest uh, ever for a Democrat in this state in terms of, um, well, actually not ever, I think uh, in modern political history, but uh, Maryland awards seven electoral votes to Joe Biden, three to Donald Trump. Next is Massachusetts, yet again, another uh, extremely liberal state, extremely democratic state. Uh, Joe Biden received 66% of the vote as well. Let's go ahead and give him the thing here. I'm going to round up just because, um, actually, no, I'm going to round down because it's closer to 63. Um, Donald Trump receives four electoral votes from the state of Massachusetts. Uh, the next state is the state of Michigan. So a swing state. We're actually getting into some of the swing states now. Uh, Biden received only a narrow amount over Donald Trump in this state. So he receives nine electoral votes to Donald Trump's uh seven electoral votes in minnesota joe biden received 52 percent of the vote there so i'm just going to give him 60 percent of the delegates or sorry the electoral votes just because uh we're going to use that mississippi not much to look at donald trump um, wins four to joe biden's two so that makes sense uh, moving up to missouri like i said i mean i didn't mention abe lincoln if you don't know what abe lincoln is it's from minnesota all the way down to uh, louisiana but now we have it filled in uh donald trump receives 60 percent of the uh, electoral votes there Donald uh, Joe Biden receives 40%. Montana has three electoral votes. Not much to see here. Two for Trump, one for Biden. So actually, that's where the Democrats might actually make up the numbers just because they don't typically win states with three electoral votes. Uh, in Nebraska, one for Biden um, and uh, four for Trump. If we were working with a purely proportional system, um, applying it to that, uh, I'm just going to use their congressional system just because that's what uh, we've been working with, and it's not a winner-take-all system, so I'm going to run with that one. But if it was a little bit different, um, Biden would actually gain an electoral vote from the state of Nebraska. Now, Nevada, another swing state. Um, Joe Biden actually narrowly won this state, so he's only going to get um, two more electoral votes than uh, Donald Trump. Over in New Hampshire, four electoral vote state, uh, three for Biden. 
and one for Donald Trump. I'm going with the election winner, which is why I'm always rounding up if it's looking like it's going to end up being a tie just because of the uh, lack of electoral votes. Uh, in New Jersey, Biden receives 57%. Uh, there we go, an actual 57% number. Uh, Donald Trump receives five electoral votes from that state. Um, over in New Mexico, a state that has five electoral votes, Donald Trump will receive uh, roughly two, and Joe Biden receives three. Now, um, New York is expecting to release some more results out of New York City sometime soon, but applying it to the current numbers we have right now, if I give him 57% or 58% of the vote, uh, he receives 17 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 12. Uh, so right around here, you will notice that Joe Biden and Donald Trump are still around even. We have a number of states still outstanding, but um, so far it's actually benefiting the GOP. In the state of North Carolina, uh, Donald Trump receives a narrow amount over uh, Joe Biden. Uh, going down to the state, sorry, not down, up to the state of North Dakota, Donald Trump receives two electoral votes. Joe Biden receives one. Uh, the state of Ohio is the next state, 18 electoral votes. Uh, Donald Trump should receive 53% of the vote here. I'm going to round up to 55%. Uh, so that gives Joe Biden eight electoral votes out of a state that voted against him, uh, coincidentally, by eight points. Uh, in Oklahoma, 65% of the vote for uh, Donald Trump. I'm going to round upwards. Uh, Joe Biden receives two electoral votes from that state. Uh, Oregon is the next state. This is a state that actually was uh, swinging to the left compared to where they voted in 2016. Joe Biden received 57% of the vote there, uh, which means Donald Trump will receive three electoral votes compared to Biden's four in that state. Pennsylvania, uh, the next state to go. Uh, Joe Biden received 50% of the vote there, but I'm going to give him the narrow amount over because he did win the state. Um, and that means uh, Joe Biden receives 11 electoral votes from Pennsylvania. Donald Trump receives nine. In Rhode Island, four electoral votes. Expected to actually reduce down to uh, three following the upcoming census, but uh, three electoral votes for Biden, one for Donald Trump. In South Carolina, uh, Donald Trump receives 55% of the vote. So let's bring that back down. Joe Biden receives four. Um, so Joe Biden's still getting a little bit closer to 270 than uh, Donald Trump, but um, still a little bit ways to go. In South Dakota, two electoral votes for Trump, one for Joe Biden. And Tennessee, this is actually the state that voted for Donald Trump the most in terms of vote share, even more than Texas, uh, a testament to actually how close Texas has gotten in recent years. Uh, Tennessee goes to uh, Trump. He received 61% uh, of the vote here, um, so I'm going to round upwards there. Tennessee goes to Donald Trump. Now, Texas is a very big state. Uh, Donald Trump received 52% of the vote there, so I'm going to give him 52% of the vote. And then Don uh, Joe Biden receives the rest. Um, let's go ahead and see. That puts Joe Biden at 251, Donald Trump at 234. So Donald Trump has already surpassed where he was before, so it looks like this system is immediately helping him. Um, so Donald Trump received 58% of the vote in Utah, which is going to round upwards. And then we have the state of Vermont, which is going to split three, uh, sorry, two to one, because it is only three electoral votes. And then we had the next state, which is Virginia, which used to be a battleground state, not so much this time. Uh, Joe Biden received 50, 54% of the vote. Uh, Donald Trump received uh, roughly 44%. So that actually is an improvement for Donald Trump. And then we have Washington, uh, which is 12 electoral votes. Joe Biden received 58% there. Actually, that's surprisingly close. It's off by less than 0.1. Um, and then we have West Virginia, which is going to be overwhelming for Donald Trump. Um, I'm going to actually round up to 80%. Um, and then the next state or the final two states are Wisconsin and Wyoming. Wyoming's going two for Trump, one for Biden. And then Wisconsin goes to Biden um, with uh, a very slim victory over Donald Trump in this state. So here we have it, the final uh, electoral map. I think I'm missing one uh, electoral vote. I'm not entirely sure where. Um, I'm sure at some point I'll realize that I missed it. If you saw it, make sure to comment it down in the description box down below. But overall, the numbers are 277 for Biden and 260 for Trump. That one stray electoral vote, I'm not entirely sure where it is. Um, but as you can see, this type of system benefits the Republican Party. There were initial parts where you would have thought maybe Biden could do better because he'd now be getting electoral votes from Texas. He'd now be getting electoral votes from Florida, from North Carolina, from Ohio and Iowa. But then you also have to realize that Joe Biden won the majority of the swing states. He won very large states as well. New York, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Michigan, California, worth uh, more than double Pennsylvania. So 
Donald Trump was able to make up the margins because Joe Biden was able to win in a number of key battleground states that if Donald Trump had won in them, it's possible that the map actually would have favored uh, Joe Biden a little bit more. So it really all depends on who is winning uh, in these battleground states. But if you're applying it to the 2020 electoral map, Joe Biden actually falls up short um, from where he was at 306. So it's significantly less, um, roughly, uh, let's think, 40 less electoral votes. Um, if it was just 276. So this is, oh, sorry, roughly 30 less electoral votes if it was 276. So all in all, I mean, this system benefits the Republican Party when applied to this map, applied to this year's election results. But in 2016, I think the map would have been a little bit different uh, with uh, a little bit more improvement for the Democrats um, and less improvement for Donald Trump. But all in all, this is the final electoral map. If there is a congressional, not a congressional, a proportional system, 277 for Biden, 260 for Trump, and then one um, toss up or stray electoral vote that I have yet to find. But that's pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 post-election videos. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.